Hi students, welcome to Year 12 Chemistry and Module 5, Equilibrium and Acid Reactions. This is video number two. We're going to be delving a little bit more into the concept of chemical equilibrium. So the first thing that we've started to look at from the last video is that in addition to irreversible reactions, reactions which only go in a single direction, we have reversible directions. If you think about um, a reaction where one reactant is going to one product, then when the reaction begins, we have a, a, a maximum amount, if you like, of reactant and zero product. So initially, we're going to start converting our reactant into product. So what will happen then is the amount of product will start to increase and the amount of reactant will decrease. In a reaction where we have a completion, what we would expect is for the whole of the um, reactant to end up at zero and for the product to go to whatever level it's going to go to, its maximum level. But in an equilibrium, we reach a point where the product is actually starting to be converted back into the reactant. And at some point, there will be a situation where the reaction rate, reaction rate for the reactants uh, drops to a certain level while the reaction rate for the product rises to a certain level where the rates are equal. As I've mentioned previously, this may or may not occur when the amount of each of these substances is equal. More often than not, it does not happen at that point. It may well be that equilibrium is reached when we have a certain amount of reactant and a certain amount of product and in fact we'll look at later examples where we find equilibrium can lie a long way to the reactant side so lots of reactant and very little product or a long way to the product side where we have a large amount of product and very little reactant um, but the most important thing is that at equilibrium the rate of the reverse reaction is the same as the rate of the forward reaction this is the characteristic of equilibrium. One interesting little example that you'll have a look at, um, hopefully as part of your course, is the iron thiocyanate equilibrium. And uh, there's an example here where we've gone from the iron ion, uh, the uh, brownish colored solution, and we're going to the iron thiocyanate, F-E-S-C-E. N2 plus and it has this blood red appearance and we can shift between these two again to show that there is an equilibrium that changes in the system can actually um, recreate the reactants or create more of the products and the color change here is a good indication that we do have an equilibrium system. As we investigate each of these systems, there's two very important um, contrasting terms or pairs of terms that we need to be aware of. The first and probably the most important thing about uh, equilibria is that they must occur in a closed system. We must ensure that our system is closed and this means that no matter escapes. Obviously, if we were to decompose something like copper carbonate into copper oxide and carbon dioxide, the fact that this is a gas means that if the uh, system is an open system, the gas will escape. We can't have any equilibrium being established when one of our products uh, is escaping from the system. It can't then be able to recombine with one of the other products in order to reform the reactants. So one very key component of an equilibrium system is it must be a closed system. The second thing, and I think probably one of the important things for us to be aware of is in, in terms of macroscopic properties. That is, what can you see? From the previous examples, both from the last video and this one, colour can be a, a very important indicator of equilibrium. And that is, 
it, the color of the solution, the crystals, um, can change indicating the presence of either the reactants or the products or maybe something in the middle between the two. However, once the color stabilizes, we know that equilibrium has been, uh, uh, has been reached, that there is no change in the macroscopic properties. So no change at equilibrium. But we do know that the system itself must be dynamic. That is, that despite the fact that there is no macroscopic change, we do have reactant particles becoming product particles, and we have product particles becoming reactant particles, but they're both happening at exactly the same rate, and therefore that's why we don't see a change in the system. This is a difference between static equilibrium and dynamic equilibrium. Effectively, at static equilibrium, the rates of reaction are zero. Okay, you can think of a, an equation that's a chemical reaction that's gone to uh, completion as effectively a static equilibrium. There is no more change, there is no macroscopic change, there are no more bubbles being produced, no changes in colour, but that's because there's no reaction occurring at all. There's no um, products forming reactants and there's no reactants forming products. This would be a static equilibrium. But a dynamic equilibrium is where we do have change constantly occurring, but that change is not having any overall effect on the system. The concentrations of the particles, uh, substances, uh, is no longer changing. Lots of important concepts in equilibrium, and so obviously I've run over my time for this particular video, but we need to explore this in a lot of detail. Equilibrium is quite a complex uh, concept, so if you haven't quite um, got it just yet, hopefully subsequent videos will help you get there, uh, as well as some of your experiences in class. Thanks for watching.